In this video, we want to look at how we can solve quadratic inequalities. And we're going to use something that you'll see in one of my other videos, which is how to use a sign line or sign chart to do this. So consider a problem in which you might have to solve the inequality 2x squared plus 4x is greater than x squared minus x minus 6. The first thing you notice is that this is quadratic because the highest power on any variable there is 2 and it's an inequality. So we're going to go through some steps. The first step is that we're going to collect the terms and get 0 on the right hand side. So we want to collect all of the non-zero terms to the left and then we want this inequality to have a 0 on the right hand side. The second step will be to factor the resulting trinomial on the left hand side. And then our final step will be to use a sign chart to find the relevant intervals that actually satisfy the inequality. So we have 2x squared plus 4x is greater than x squared minus x minus 6. We're going to subtract x squared from both sides, add x to both sides, and then add 6 to both sides to make the right hand side 0. When we do that, the resulting inequality will be x squared plus 5x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. So our goal here is to find all of the values of x, any intervals on the real number line, for which the left-hand side, the x squared plus 5x plus 6, is greater than or equal to 0. So first we have to factor. And so we can see that since we have x squared plus 5x um, plus 6, that this factors to x plus 2 times x plus 3, and that's greater than or equal to 0. So consider the possibilities. Well, what might work here? Well, certainly if any one of those factors was 0, then we would satisfy the inequality. For example, if x was equal to minus 2 or x was equal to minus 3. Certainly if both of the factors, we chose x values so that both of the factors, x plus 2 and x plus 3, were greater than 0, they were positive, then that would work because when you multiply two positive entities together, the product is positive. And our third possibility would be if the x values we chose, the interval we chose, had x plus 2 and x plus 3 both negative because, of course, multiplying two negative entities together would also give you something that was positive. So we're going to use our sign chart to determine this. So we have the two factors, x plus 2 and x plus 3. The first thing we do is we draw a number line and we put the zeros of each of the factors on that number line. We then list the first factor, x plus 3, and we note that that's going to be equal to 0 at minus 3. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out what the sign of x plus 3 is and each of the three intervals that have been created by putting a minus 3 and minus 2 on the number line. So we'll pick some value to the left of minus 3, any value you want to, say minus 4. Minus 4 plus 3 would be minus 1, so it's negative. That means that everything on that side of minus 3 is negative. And because this is a linear factor, x plus 3 is a line, we know that if there's a place where the line is below the x-axis, and then we know where it's 0, then on the other side of the 0 it's got to be above or positive. But we can test this by picking values. So pick a value between minus 3 and minus 2, say minus 2 and a half. Minus 2 and a half plus 3 is certainly positive. Pick a value to the right of minus 2, like 10. 10 plus 3 is positive. So in both of those intervals over there, that factor will be positive. Okay, now let's consider the second factor, which is x plus 2. x plus 2 will be 0 at minus 2. Let's pick something in between minus 3 and minus 2 again, so we could do minus 2 and a half. Minus 2 and a half plus 2 would be negative. Let's look at that other region to the left of minus 3 and pick something there, like minus 5. Minus 5 plus 2 would be minus 3, that's negative. So on the left hand side of the minus 2 on the number line, x plus 2 is negative in both of those regions. Pick a test value to the right of minus 2, plug that into the factor x plus 2, and you'll get for example, if we chose 5, 5 plus 2 is 7, so all of the values to the right of minus 2 
are positive. So now we know the signs of both of our factors on every possible interval we could consider. And so if we look on the left of minus 3, both of the factors are negative. You multiply two negative numbers together, you get a positive. So we're going to put the plus sign at the top of our number line. We know that at minus 3, one of the factors is 0, so certainly the product of those two factors would be 0. Now consider the region in between minus 3 and minus 2. One of the factors is negative, the other one is positive, so when you multiply those together, that gives you a negative number. Again, at minus 2, one of the factors is 0, so their product would be 0. And finally, look at the two factors to the left of minus 2, and notice that both of them are positive. Multiplying two positive numbers together gives you a positive number, so over there everything is positive. So now as we look at the top of the number line, we can easily identify the regions for which these two factors being multiplied together are greater than or equal to zero. And those intervals will be from minus infinity to minus three. Let me change that, got a little typo there. That should be minus 3. And the minus 3 is included because it equals to 0 there. And that's union with the interval from minus 2, minus 2 included, to infinity. And this is how you determine the solutions to a quadratic inequality.